talk to us Last today. Phone 1300 424 That's 1300 424 Or visit pmn.com.au. Now, as promised, we kept it quiet, but we oh, have Jizza and oh, DJ please, Symphony please, 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 back up. live in the studio, man. What's happening? Yeah, yeah, what's going on? Chillin', man. Thank you very much for taking the time to roll through. I understand you just got off the plane not that long ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. Not <laughs> long ago. How's the flight? All good? The flight was good. It was comfortable. It was quick. Well, the connection was quick. So That's always good. First one was a little longer, but I'm used to it. Now, um, look, man, as you can imagine, it's not every day that we get a member of, you know, Wu-Tang to roll through the studio. Out of late. <laughs> now, you guys got the gig uh, tomorrow night at Fowler's Live. Yes. Now, what can the fans expect from a Jizza DJ Symphony show? Someone that's excited to be in your town and rock for the people, you know, some real raw energy, you now, know, and some throwbacks. <laughs> Now, you know, um, this is your first time in Adelaide, but not your first time in Australia? I'm not sure, but I don't know if it's my first time. I've been in Australia many times, mm. so I don't, I, don't, I don't know if it's my first time in Adelaide or not. Sometimes I, I can't remember. But you've been to Oz before, so obviously you enjoy coming down here. Yes, I do. What, what are some of the things about Australia that, that you enjoy when you come down? Well, your accent is cool. You know, <laughs> the weather is nice. I mean, when we're in the winter, you're in the spring and the summer, so that's a cool part. I mean, now, a um, lot of land. A lot of land. Yeah, <laughs> lots of land. Now, um, I guess one of the things, you know, in, in brief, as quick as you can go through, I mean, Wu-Tang, one of the most legendary groups in hip-hop of all time. I understand that some of you guys are uh, cousins. Yes. So I guess... We all relate it in some kind of way. Yeah, some and, of us are cousins. And so you guys, some of you are from the same area, same neighborhoods, and that's how you the came most, together? Most of us are from the same area. And then so how did the whole rapping thing, like who was kind of the person that was like, oh, let's make this happen? RZA. I mean, RZA had the plan, but before he came with the plan to bring out Wu, we had existing deals before. I was signed to Cold Chillin' Records through Warner Brothers, and um, RZA was on Tommy Boy Records. This mm -hmm. is... Uh, maybe two years before Wu Tang. Yeah, well. And, um, things didn't go right. So he went back to the drawing board, and RZA went and got some of the brothers that we had grown up with, we grew up with from the hood, and everyone came together and we did Protect Your Neck, and the rest is history. Now, when the, I guess when Protect Your Neck and then the whole, you know, 36 Chambers thing come out, I mean, can you give us a bit of insight as to what that was like? when it was all, you know, happening in the moment for Wu-Tang? Um, it was just a lot of fun, man. It was, it was exciting. It was a lot of fun. It was a, a, a moment to strike back. What I, what I mean by that is because, I mean, it was, it was good for everyone. I mean, for myself, it was good because I, was, I already had a deal, and I was on a label who didn't really support or push me in a way I should have been supported hmm. and Rizzo he was kind of going through the same thing with Tommy Boy Records he had some some legal issues he was going through and um, Tommy Boy wasn't trying to support him I put an album out they didn't really support that or push that so we were kind of like stuck and not moving anywhere hmm. like, like almost like being stuck in traffic and, and just not <laughs> going anywhere in your car and park and um, the rest of the dudes the rest of the brothers, they hadn't had a deal yet, so they were just MCs who were still making demos. Mm. So for us to come together and put Protect Your Neck together and then get a deal with the um, 36 Chambers, it was, it was just a fresh start for all of us. So it was, it was a fun moment. Now, pr did Protect Your Neck originally get broken into on the Stretch and Bobito show? Um, Probably so, because they were some of the, I mean, I can't, uh, RZA would be the best one to answer that question, but um, Stretch and Barbito, they were like, from the beginning, they were supporting us. 
with a few other DJs. So it, it could have been on their show hmm, the first right. time it was it was played. Now, um, I guess uh, you know one of the one of the most exciting things that's happened in hip hop this year, I think, is the release of the new the new Wu Tang album. Yes. Um, I guess you know, give us your thoughts on and insights on that on that release. Well, um, I've I've heard the album maybe two times. Um, this was quite a different album, unlike some of the other albums mm. we have recorded. I say that to say that usually we, when we work on a project, we all in one spot, we're in the studio together. But this happened to be an album, uh, 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 DJ Mathematics. You know, he's mm. put out several projects and he usually asks some of the Wu members to, you know, participate in his project. So that's how that came about. Math was working on a project and he got several brothers to participate and get on his album. And um, he finished it and at some point that became a Wu-Tang album. So was it all Mathematics production? M probably the majority. I must, I mean, I, I, you would have to ask him mm. or Rizzo that, but I, it, to my knowledge, I think most of it was Mathematics production. Now, um, another interesting thing that happened uh, with Wu Tang, I think this was a couple of years ago, was the whole Martin Shkreli thing. Right. Um, now, I actually don't know too much about it. So, just to my understanding, that he, he bought a there was a Wu Tang album, one copy. He bought it for a couple of million, and that was yes. It. So, can you, I guess, give us a bit more insight? I mean, I, I I know as much as you know, or you know as much as I know about it. I I, ha I haven't even heard the album. Oh, what? So I don't know what song I'm on, how many songs I'm on, what verse. I I've, I've never heard the album. So how does that something like that sort of come about? <laughs> I, I, I can't. Well, it's kind of like the situation with Math in a way. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, well, I'm not comparing this producer to Math because Math is family. Mm. But you know, this 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 guy, Silver Rings, who was affiliated with the clan through RZA, mm -hmm. you know. Every time we would go to Europe, to if it's one of us or some of us are on tour, or if I'm out there, some of us out there as a solo performing, you know, we usually follow each other. If I'm there one month, Ray is there the month after, Ghost is there. So Silver Rains would ask us to participate, you know, to get on a track. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm in town, he would say, Yo, Jizzy, you think you could do a verse for me? And if I have the time, I may come through and do a verse. And um, there's been a time he he had he came to New York and he asked me when I get on the track to do a verse. So this was an album that was probably recorded over, you know, certain several years mm -hmm. in the makings. It took several years. So this was just a producer who was working on his own stuff would have a track and ask a clan member to get on it and then if you had the time or if you whatever you got on you the got track on so he built that up over a certain number of years and I guess he figured he had enough material with the whole clan on it to put out an album and that's what he did he put an album together and, and somehow he came up with this idea to sell one copy or mm. That's I crazy. can't really, I can't really tell you much about it. I'm still waiting to hear the album, <laughs> so I don't know. True. Now, um, you guys are also responsible. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh, Wu Tang Forever that was the first hip hop double disc that came out of the East Coast. I oh yeah. I think. Now, we, you know, we play that pretty heavily on the show here. When coming off the back of Thirty Six Chambers, obviously shit would have gotten crazy. Did, was there a lot of pressure? trying to follow that up with that, you know, that next Wu-Tang project, because that I don't, was I huge. Don't, I don't think it was a lot of pressure. I think it was probably more pressure to follow Wu-Tang Forever. Mm. Yeah. I don't think it was that much pressure, because we was, we were just, we had so much material, and dudes were still writing every day and recording all the time, and, and, and they just had a whole bunch of material. I don't think it was any pressure. To do Wu Tang Forever. Now tell us about um. Well, first of all, we've got your uh, first joint on cassette. Yeah, I was looking at. <laughs> I was looking at that cassette. 
<laughs> and you got the box playing in yeah, too. Yeah, we right? had the burn box in the back. Yeah, I was I was checking this out. <laughs> this is the this is the um this is the second cover. Oh, okay. So this is not the original cover. Okay. What happened was that this label that I was on decided to re-release it after Wu Tang came out. So they didn't want to support oh. me, like I was just telling you a few minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They, you know, the owner didn't want to support me when I first dropped this album. They didn't give me the push of support because we had several other big artists on the label at the same time. Mm -hmm. It was a small label, so they couldn't focus their attention on everyone. So I was kind of like on a back burner, and they didn't want to support this album. And then Wu Tang dropped. And then, your neck, and then 36 Chambers came out, and then this guy decided to re-release this album, but change the cover and put a new cover on it. Yeah, wow. You know? <laughs> and that's the one that we so got. So, that's how, yeah, that's how that came about. And then um, Liquid Swords was your solo after that. Yes. And that had a big impact. Now, that was between 36 Chambers and... We tank forever. Yes. That well, was, yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that was, was right off the bat. That was in '95. Chambers. That was in '95, actually. Yeah. So tell us about that particular release, like the impact that that had for you and your career and Wu Tang. Um. Tank. Once again, like I said, it was it was very exciting to put out an album, another album after going through what I went through. So I was kind of like striking back, like mm. yeah, y'all y'all slept on this one. Now I'll see where I'm at. And I, and I still had a lot of material. I had a lot of rhymes I was writing. It was just a, 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 a starting point for the whole clan, really. We were all getting solo deals. And mm. it was just a fun moment to go in and record this album. I had signed to Geffen. You know, um, Ray had signed to Loud. Meth was on Def Jam. Dirty was on Electra. It was just really, really popping for us at the time. And, um, you know, I, I signed with Geffen Records. I may have been the first rap artist on that label. Yeah, I'm wow. not sure, but I may have been the first on the Geffen label. And um, I was given so much freedom and, 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 leadway, and leeway and opportunity to do whatever I wanted to do. I mean, because we already had the plan. RZA had the plan in his head. And um, I had all these ideas and thoughts how I wanted the cover to be, how I wanted the songs. We had all these old routines. And we, we were just focused, and we knew exactly what we wanted to do. So the label let us do. It was just a. It was like night and day from where I was at to where I had went to. Yeah, it was. So it was. It was a fun time. And then getting the clan, we were in the basement still. It was still recording in the, the place.